Okay, we'll call the council meeting to order at 6 p.m. <coughs> Time? Resolve that the minutes of the regular meeting of council held at City Hall on Monday, March 14th, 2016 be adopted as circulated. Moved by Councillor Espy and seconded by Councillor Draycott. All those in favor? And that's carried. We have no delegations this evening. We'll move into hearings. Um, we'll open the public hearing for variation PC 6-16. This is Nestnet Limited at 633 and 635 Dufferin Avenue. Uh, is there anyone here to speak to the hearing? Um, Michael Gray, I'm re representing Nestnet. Uh, Mr. Mayor, City Councilors, thanks uh, once again for your indulgence. Uh, I'm kind of hoping this is the last time I have to appear before you. But, uh, the developers tell me that we have to ask for a, a, another variance. Um, basically, the, the garages that we had planned to put in uh, didn't meet code or required adjustment to meet code. So instead of two, a double garage, we have to, have to put in two single garages on the back property. And I believe that requires us to come back to council and ask for uh, some more variances. Uh, I still think that we're within the property line of many of the properties on that uh, on that street. Um, Mr. Miller, Harry Miller, the architect, can uh, answer your questions if there's anything further. Uh, there's the parking area on the south east of the property is to allow the doctors that are there overnight sort of more rapid egress when they're sort of called in the middle of the night. So that's added on a couple of it. There's a little entryway to the area into unit A um, and that's why we've actually had to come back to ask for a, a further variance for, for the property. Okay, any questions from council for Dr. Gray? Good, thank you. I'll speak a bit, just Harry Miller. The sheet that you have shows the setbacks in Imperial. Um, at the top of the page, we have always had a five foot setback, but we've enlarged the garages, so now the whole scheme, the whole layout has shifted toward 9th Street by two and a half feet. So we have five feet now between the property at 9th Street. And then if you look at the left-hand side, uh, the building is 25 feet from the back lane per requirement, but we want to enclose that little porch, which is the shortcut entrance into Unit A, and that's five feet wide. So we're asking for a 20-foot variance at the back lane. And um, just to kind of put it in reference, if you have a second, I have a model. Sorry, a little hasty, but you can see it. I tried to show other setbacks <coughs> at the neighboring properties. This is the neighbor to the to the west. They're five feet back from the property line. We're five feet back from the property line. <coughs> and that actually helps a little bit because we have a little more backyard behind these two units. This house here is about seven feet back from the property line. This garage is right on the property lines, zero setback, and the house is at five feet. The reason I'm showing you this is I want to, I'm always asserted we were not trying to do anything that was out of keeping in the neighborhood. At least we're harmonious with existing setbacks. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Any questions from council? Okay. I have a motion to close the hearing. Councillor Aspie. Okay. 
Resolved that the public hearing for variation PC 6 16 Nestnet Limited 633 and 635 Dufferin Avenue East now be closed. Moved by Councillor Espy, seconded by Councillor Fraze. All those in favor of the motion? And that's carried. Nestnet Limited is applying for a variation, variation order to allow rear yard requirement of 7.5 meters to be reduced to 6.09 meters, interior side yard requirement of 4.6 meters to be reduced to 1.524 meters, corner side yard requirement on Dufferin Avenue East and 9th Street Southeast of 4.6 meters to be reduced to 1.524 meters. Applicant has received approval, approval for the reduction of interior and corner side yards as per variation order number PC75-15, minute reference number 05-16. Since then, they have decided that it would, they would like to have roofs over the side and rear entrances of the suites as well as larger garages. This vari variance addresses these issues. Property owner wishes to build a sixplex with overhangs over the front doors. This property is in an R3 residential multiple family zone. The application has been circulated to the various city departments with no concerns. Public notices have been sent to all property owners within a 100 meter radius. It is the recommendation of this committee and I so move that the Council of the City of Portsville Prairie approve the variation requests of Nestnet Limited to vary the rear yard requirement of 7.5 meters to be reduced to 6.09 meters, interior side yard requirement of 4.6 meters to be reduced to 1.524 meters, and the corner side yard requirement on Dufferin Avenue East and 9th Street Southeast of 4.6 meters to be reduced to 1.524 meters at the property known as 633 and 635 Dufferin Avenue East, which is legally described as lot 79 to 81, block six, plan 102, parish of Portugal Prairie, with the condition that the two properties be consolidated. Moved by Councillor Espy, seconded by Councillor Fraze. Any questions or comments on the motion? All those in favor of the motion? And that's carried. We'll move into committee. Uh, first committee is Finance, Legislative and Property Committee, and that's Councillor Wall this evening. Yes, Your Worship. At the February 23rd, 2015 meeting of Council, the City's Organization and Procedure Bylaw 15-8628 was amended to include a community question period at the end of each Council meeting. The bylaw currently states, the public shall be permitted to ask questions during the community question period where a person wishes to ask questions to members of council that pertain to an item on the current agenda without prior notice. The entire question period will be limited to 15 minutes unless extended by a majority decision of the members of city council present at the meeting. Council has been asked to change the format of the community question period specifically to open it up to topics that are not on the current agenda. Council discussed this at the February 22nd, 2016 meeting and resolved to remove the phrase that pertain to an item on the current agenda from clause 4.9.1 of the bylaw. Further discussion in committee on March 14th, 2016 led to the addition of the following two clauses. 4.9.2, the mayor may interrupt and deny any further question or comment from any person who if in his or her opinion, A, uses offensive words in referring to any member of council or to any official or employee of the municipality or member of the public, B, shouts immoderately, raises his or her voice, uses profane, vulgar, or offensive language, and 4.9.3, the community question period shall take place after the committee meeting portion of the meeting. At the February 8th, 2016 meeting of council, the order of council committees on meeting agendas changed due to the substitution of chairpersons on two committees. The organization and procedures bylaw currently states all council committee meetings will be held at city hall on the second and fourth Monday of each month following the council meeting and shall be in the following order. Finance, Legislative and Property Committee, City Planning and Economic Development, Public Safety Committee, Waterworks Committee, Transportation Committee, and Recreation and Community Services Committee. The placement of the Public Safety and Recreation Com Community Services Committee needs to be reversed at this time. The recommendation is, and I so move, that the Council of the City of Portage La Prairie authorize the following. 
by giving bylaw 16-8644 first reading a the removal of the phrase <coughs> that pertain to an item on the current agenda from clause 4.9.1 the addition of clauses 4.9.2 and 4.9.3 the reversal of Public Safety Committee and Recreation and Community Services Committee in Clause 3.5.1. Moved by Councillor Wall, seconded by Councillor Draycott. Any questions or comments on the motion? All in favor of the motion? And that's carried. Anything else under finance, uh, Councillor Wall? Not at this time, no. Thank you. Uh, City Planning and Economic Development Committee, and that's uh, Councillor Espy. Thank you, Worship. Just the one item that was dealt with in hearings. Thank you. And that concludes my report. And Community Services Committee, please. Uh, thank you, Worship. The Community Services Committee has nothing to report today. Thank you, Councillor Fraze. Uh, Waterworks Committee, Councillor Wall. The Waterworks Committee has no report this evening, Your Worship. Thank you. And the Public Safety uh, Transportation Committee, sorry, Councillor Draycott. That's all right. Uh, Transportation Committee has nothing to report at this time. Thank you. And uh, Public Safety Committee, Councillor Espy. Thank you, Your Worship. The Public Safety Committee has nothing to report. Thank you. We have no deferred business. We do have a number of items of new business. Uh, first one is the award of tender for the supply of greater, and that's the Transportation Committee. Thank you, Your Worship. Uh, so listed out there is a table with uh, various <coughs> different uh, pricing for a new greater that we did receive from a few different companies. The tender was advertised in the Daily Graphic Merricks and the City webpage, and four companies were contacted by phone. Tenders were invited for the supply of one new or used grader. The tender package had 25 minimum specification requirements included that bidders were asked to meet. All the equipment met or exceeded most specifications. Bidders were also requested to provide a trade-in value for the city's 2005 New Holland RG200B grader. The lowest and only tender submitted for a used grader was submitted for High Track Limited on a 2015 Case 885B grader. This unit met all specifications requested in the tender and was slightly less than 1,000 hours on the machine. This would equate to about two years worth of operating time within the City of Portage La Prairie. Their price minus the trade of the City's 2005 New Holland RG200B grader net of GST rebate totals $211,428.76. The lowest tender submission for a new grader was submitted from Brandt Tractor Limited for a 2015 John Deere 770G grader. This unit met all but one specification for machine articulation of 25 degrees. In hindsight, this specification should have been 20 degrees articulation. The case grader is the only machine known on the market to have a 25 degree articulation and therefore this specification created an unfair playing ground for the other major suppliers. Brandt's bid price minus the trade for the city's 2005 New Holland grader net of GST rebate is $229,450. There is always the unknown when purchasing a piece of used equipment. Uh, staff had an opportunity to try both machines before the tender closed. All liked the feel and the easiness to which the John Deere grader operated. The main point stressed by the men was the machine's ability to push large amounts of snow with a much better traction. Another point brought forward was how the side wing can lift and operate tighter to the machine which will mean more control for street and snow bank widening while maneuvering around trees and street signs. The mechanics also explained that the deer grader appeared to have a much easier, appeared to be much easier to work on for maintenance issues as there were less hidden parts and hydraulic lines. The difference between the two machines is only $18,021.24. The allotted item for the budget capital purchase is $240,000. It is the recommendation that the Council of City of Portage La Prairie award the tender for the supply of the grader of the Brandt Tractor Limited for the purchase of one new grader at a tender price of $305,100 including taxes 
and furthermore that the Council of City of Portage La Prairie accept a trade-in offer of $62,150 including taxes from Brant Tractor Limited for the city's New Holland RG200B grader, leaving the final net purchase price of $242,950 including taxes and FOB Portage. Moved by Councillor Draycott, seconded by Councillor Wall. Any questions or comments on the motion? All those in favor of the motion? And that's carried. Thank you. Our second uh, piece of new business this evening is PPP Canada, and that's finance. That's Councillor Espy, please. Or, sorry, Councillor Wall. Yes, Your Worship. <clears throat> this report has to do with a financial agreement for a collaborative project for the City of Portage La Prairie Water Pollution Control Facility Nutrient Reduction Upgrade Project uh, with P3 Canada. P3 Canada is a federal crown corporation created to deliver public infrastructure through value, timeliness, and accountability to taxpayers through pri public private partnerships. Funding is provided by P3 Canada through the P3 Canada Fund. Through the terms of this agreement, P3 Canada and the City of Port La Prairie will enter into a collaborative project relating to nutrient removal to conform to new effluent guidelines applied by the province of Manitoba. Under the agreement, the City is required to submit a comprehensive and robust business case of which 50% of the eligible costs can be claimed for reimbursement through the P3 Canada Fund. A schematic design and cost estimate also must be submitted and are reimbursed at 25% of eligible costs. All eligible costs must be incurred since June 13, 2014. Evaluation of P3 Canada and use of P3 Canada funds is conducted at the end of P3 Canada's fiscal year. Any costs incurred by the city to meet its obligation to participate in the initial or final evaluation is solely that of the city. I might just say this is a, an interesting 28-page uh, agreement with lots of definitions, uh, terms, and conditions, uh, which I read twice <laughs> to make sure I understood it. So at this time, uh, it's the recommendation, and I so move that the city Council of the City of Portage La Prairie authorize the Mayor and City Manager to sign the financial agreement for a collaborative project for the City of Portage La Prairie Water Pollution Control Facility Nutrient Reduction Upgrade Project with P3 Canada on behalf of the City. Financial results for the year, I'm sorry, that's the end of the motion. So moved by Councillor Wall, seconded by Councillor Espy. Any questions or comments on the motion? If I might just a comment to clarify that this is not in any way the construction of this very expensive plant. This is just the financial consultation regarding how to finance it. Yeah, this is the development of a business case and, uh, <clears throat> and uh, schematics and so on. And this should lead to us recovering approximately 143000 of the money we've spent on design, consultants, and the rest of it so far? That's correct, Your Worship. Any other questions or comments? All those in favor of the motion. That's carried. Uh, the third item is also finance. Councillor Wall? Yes. Financial results for the year of 2015 are a test for consideration. The year-end surplus in the general operating fund of 155800 is realized primarily from decreased costs through most cost centers. The general operating fund contains the following significant variations between budget and actual, and uh, there follows quite an extensive list of the uh, savings in various budget areas. Uh, a year-end surplus in the utility operating fund of $1,543 is realized. The utility operating fund contained the following significant variations between budget and actual, and again, there's a list of those items. 
Appendix A contains a list of cost centers with material differences exceeding $20,000 between the budgeted amounts and the 2015 actual amounts. So the recommendation is, and I so move, that the financial statement and actual for the year ended December 31st, 2015 be adopted and that the 2015 operating surplus be transferred to the General Reserve and the 2015 utility operating surplus be transferred to the Utility Reserve. Moved by Councillor Wall, seconded by Councillor Espy. Any questions or comments on the motion? I have one question, Councillor Wall, and I realize uh, Mr. Braden's not here. Um, most significant item in the utility is the decrease in water main replacement. That's in excess of one million. Is that, um, is that less than we did the year before or just less than what was budgeted for or planned? Mm. I, I think uh, some of those things are being carried forward. Uh, projects that weren't uh, able to be completed in uh, 2015. Okay. Any other questions or comments? <coughs> All those in favor of the motion? And that's carried. Our fourth item of new business is the grant to the city's age friendly committee, and that's community services. Thank you, Worship. Uh, we've received a request uh, from the Age-Friendly Committee to continue a service they've been providing uh, for a number of years. The Age-Friendly Committee is requesting assistance in funding the printing of the 2016 edition of the Guide for Seniors in Portage Prairie. This guide is 42 pages and lists resources for seniors in the areas of housing, health, and well-being recreation and entertainment, culture, transportation, essential services, etc. The guide was created in 2011 and revised in 2014. The last edition saw 500 guides printed at a cost of $1,823 and was distributed uh, through the Portage of Prairie Regional Library, the Service for Seniors, uh, and the Herman Pryor Center and at, at City Hall. And those copies have all been handed out and uh, they're looking for assistance in printing a, another run of that uh, guide. So the 2016 edition of the guide was edited this year by staff at Service for Seniors at no cost. The guide will be available online, however not everyone has access to the internet. Therefore the Age Friendly Committee is seeking funding uh, to pay for the printing cost only. The best quote received was $1,700 including taxes. Uh, this is the second request for grant from the Age Friendly Committee. During the 2016 budget deliberation, Council denied the original request of $2,000 for this project. But since then, administration has reviewed the internal budget and was able to find $1,000 from City Hall's office equipment budget that could be redirected to this project. So it is the recommendation of the Community Services Committee that the Council of the City of Portage Prairie approve the grant request in the amount of $1,000 to, to be provided to the Age Friendly Committee of Council for the printing of the 2016 edition of the Guide for Seniors in Portage Prairie. And I so move. Thank you. Moved by Councillor Frey, seconded by Councillor Dracon. Any questions or comments on the motion? I think it's kind of obvious from the fact that all the previous copies were handed out and probably used that uh, this uh, service that people have come to count on. All those in favor of the motion? That's carried. <clears throat> our next item is the water system reassessment. Uh, Waterworks, Councillor Wall, please. Yes, Your Worship. I think you'll recall a few weeks ago we awarded a contract to AECOM Canada to uh, do an assessment uh, report on the water treatment plant. They have completed the water system reassessment report for 2016. This assessment is a requirement for all water treatment plants in the province of Manitoba. It's set out by the provincial regulations for water systems. The assessment has to be done every five years. This report has been submitted to Manitoba Conservation and Water Stewardship, Office of Drinking Water, as per our operating license requirement. 
The assessment report reviews the water quality testing reports and standards over the past five years and all treatment processes. The report includes a review of the structures, heating, ventilation, chemical storage area, and electrical of all facilities for water treatment in storage areas, reservoirs. The assessment also includes a review of the water distribution system. The ability to meet the regulatory requirement for drinking water quality guidelines has also been reviewed. It includes the review of the log credit removal for each of the treatment processes, such as pretreatment, softening, ozonization, sand filters, GAC filters, and chlorination. The summary of recommendations included the re in the report uh, number 27 recommendations. A lot of them are very minor. Uh, uh, building maintenance items, uh, things of that nature. Uh, some are a little more uh, involved. All of these recommendations will be reviewed and addressed. The province will require the city to prepare a compliance plan and submit it to the province. And that's my report. Thank you, Councillor Wall. Next item is the award of a tender, uh, award of tender that's for a vacuum truck, and this is the Transportation Committee. Thank you, Your Worship. As you can see, there are a number of different uh, bids that were received by the city. They're listed out there for you as well. Uh, this tender was advertised on the Daily Graphic, Merrick's, and the city's webpage again. All major companies were called and informed of the tender. 14 tender packages were either picked up at the operations department or emailed upon request. About nine tender packages were submitted on or before the closing date and time of March 15, 2016 at 2 p.m. All the above prices include both taxes and our FOV portage. The low tendered price for the vacuum unit from Custom Truck Sales Inc. met all of but one specification asked for in the tender process. The spec not met was for a 24-inch rear door that is used for cleaning the tank. Tank, excuse me. Their spec was for 21 inches. The next four low bids also did not meet the spec and were also for 21 inches. Management and staff feel that the 21 inch opening is sufficient for cleaning purposes. This unit will replace the city's 2002 unit. This septic vacuum truck is used by the transportation department for cleaning up of city's lane drainage, land drainage issues throughout the city. Waterworks also uses this unit in emergency situations where or when one truck cannot keep up or rental units are not available. The present truck has served the city well but is wearing down, quickly costing a lot in repairs and is becoming a bit of a concern with respect to downtime. $150,000 was budgeted in the utility reserve for this unit and the total cost to the city net of GST and including the acceptance of a trade-in for the city's vacuum truck is $135,327.40 which is $14,672.60 under budget. It is the recommendation that the Council of City of Portage La Prairie award the tender of the supply of a vacuum truck unit as specified in tender 16 OPS 011 to Custom Truck Sales Inc. for the tendered price of $155,874.50 including taxes and furthermore that the Council of City of Portage La Prairie accept the trade-in offer of $13,650 for the city's 2002 Ford vacuum truck leaving the final net purchase price of $135,327.40, including taxes and FOB portage. Moved by Councillor Draycott and seconded by Councillor Wall. Any comments or questions on the motion? All those in favor of the motion? And that's carried. Thank you. Well, that concludes new business. We have no old business. Um, we have question period now. And the next meeting, it'll take place um, at committee. So is there anybody in the gallery who would like to ask a question this evening? Mr. Knott? Uh, more than a question, Mr. Mayor Harris. Uh, first of all, I'd, I'd ask permission from council, <clears throat> pardon me, to ask a question on council's past business and council's future business, neither of which are dealt with tonight's business and because only first reading has passed of uh, the changes 
it requires me to ask you to pass a motion for me to ask those questions. Okay, how does council feel about opening up question period? All those in favor? And uh, yes. Thank you, Mayor Ferris. First question is to the concern of the animal control. What's happened to the dog? Uh, you're referring to the dog from the dangerous dog hearing? The mutt that chewed the little girl. Uh, that dog has been removed from this community. It has been um, put in a placement with no children present, uh, and it will never be around children again. And I can tell you it's not in Portage, and it's not in the RM Portage, it's nowhere near Portage. Thank you. A concomitant question with that. Council has an animal control bylaw and an officer to enforce the bylaw. Council, by decision, um, negated the decision of the animal control bylaw person who was following con Council's bylaw. Does this leave Council in an invidious position where you've set up a bylaw, you've in uh, approved someone to enforce it, and then you tell that person that decision was uh, to be overridden. Where does that leave counsel? Well, just to clarify, um, the decision was not made by the animal control officer. The decision um, regarding the dog was made by the board, the Dangerous Animal Hearing Board. Thank you. Thank you for that correction. Um, my question to do with future council business is the committee this following this council and has to do with transportation and the CP rail crossing. Is it an appropriate time to ask question now or not? Um, well, the discussion or the decision is going to be made. The discussion took place, um, I, I think so. Uh, just a quick comment then, sir. <clears throat> um, CP rail, uh, the advance notice for the costs that, that uh, council has to share, co-share with the federal government transportation, the, the province and so on. Uh, in the 90s, I was uh, involved with the research and writing of the, uh, uh, re going over every five years, the Railway Safety Act in Canada has to be reviewed. And we reviewed it and did a bunch of research and wrote some chapters and did some research and produced a report one of the most important things that we saw in the uh, national e evaluation review of the, re of the act was that crossings were the most, were, were the things that grabbed most attention and the, that crossings were the part of the main part of the safety um, involved in rail safety. Now, these days with the transportation of various uh, dangerous goods and various goods of all kinds, that's taken most of the um, most of the attention away from rail crossings. However, reading this, the rail crossing that's uh, purported or sort of proposed for Portage, I think this is something that council would be really well advised to fund, to support, and uh, and to work with CP Rail on this because this is something that the majority of the accidents and deaths in Canada for rails on rail crossings, not at the horrific um, overturning of uh, oil tankers. So uh, when it comes to the decision and the discussion of this item, through the uh, chair of the uh, Transportation Committee, I would urge Council to really support it. Okay, thank you. My last question, Mayor Ferris, is to do with uh, the proposal for on, uh, you've just given first reading to the changes on the uh, organization bylaw. 492 uh, reads very much like uh, 1900. And, and I really think that uh, one should look at, at the March 14th council meeting at which I was unable to attend um, as I didn't want to infect the whole city. Uh, you passed an inclusion to have the mayor have the power to do this and that and remove people and so on. The mayor, as chair of the committee, has that power anyway. Is it is it not is it necessary to include words 
like that. I just think it reads a little bit weird. Okay. You're, um, I think you're partly right, uh, Mr. Knott. Um, not many cities have question periods, so I asked the administration to check out, find an example of a city that does, and Brandon is one. And this language, and actually it was modernized, the, <laughs> the language in the uh, Brandon one referred to um, the, Her Majesty, the Queen, et cetera, et cetera. So this has been modernized somewhat, um, but it's, um, um, it, it's based loosely upon what Brannon has in their wording uh, for their question period. I understand, Mr. Mayor. And your other question about is it necessary, um, maybe not, I don't know, but it's in there. Well, Mayor Ferris, as the chair, you have the power to do this anyway. I just think it's redundant. Uh, but on the same thing, on the same one, 493, <coughs> I think is an excellent move, and I hope Council supports uh, second and third reading on it. So we'll be able to ask questions after the committee meetings as well. Thank you. So uh, just, that was a comment, that wasn't a question. Thank you very much for listening. Thank you, Mr. Knott. Okay, we're gonna move right into committee. And uh, mid, sorry, um, we are adjourned at 6.34 p.m. We'll move right into committee. And uh, just a reminder that everybody's welcome to stay for committee. This is open to the press and to the public. So first committee, Finance, Legislative and Property Committee, Councillor Wall. Yes, as uh, just brought to our attention by Mr. Knott, uh, next week we'll be bringing the Organization and Procedures Bylaw forward uh, for uh, second and third reading. And uh, that's all I have there, Your Worship. And just make a comment um, for anybody that wasn't here. Um, so the, the rationale in the um, question period being held, well, close to conjunction with committee, as, as Mr. Knott was saying, we do have from time to time people that attend committee uh, and have said, well, can I ask a question? And that's, council can ask questions during committee. So question per period following committee should um, accommodate those questions on items that have just been discussed that evening. If I could make a comment, Your Worship. I actually, uh, I like the wording that was presented by management for us um, in terms of your ability to quash anything that might be said that's hurtful. I think in most recent times, often, Mr. Knott, what we see is maybe not for council in particular, but oftentimes if you don't have things written down, if you don't set parameters, then if you act on it and ask somebody to stop their current train of thought to calm down in this case in council or to use polite language, then sometimes the thought process is, well, it doesn't say I can't. So now it says you can't. So I do uh, appreciate that addition. Uh, hopefully it's not necessary but uh, I do like the changes that have been made to our question period so far. Any further comments or questions? Okay. Councillor Wall, anything else for finance? Uh, no, Your Worship. Okay, thank you. Uh, City Planning Economic Development Committee, Councillor Nesby. Thank you, Your Worship. The first item is a variation request from Cobbs Plumbing and Heating. They're looking to uh, add a piece of fence on their property. If there are any questions on that, I will do my very best to answer them or defer to Kenelm on this one. So this fence isn't in a residential area. This is on the number one east or leaving Portage East End? Yes. All industrial. Second item is a rezoning. Second and third reading CHB developments looking to rezone property from C2 Central Commercial to R3 Residential Multiple Family, and that's 101, 107, and 115 Tupper Street North. And moving on, the last item is the building reports for February 2016. 
And if there are no questions, that concludes my report. Okay. Thank you, Councillor Espy. Community Service Committee, uh, Councillor Fraze. Thank you, Worship. Uh, Community Service Committee has nothing to report at this time. Thank you. Uh, Waterworks Committee, uh, Councillor Wall. Yes, Your Worship. Uh, we'll be bringing forward the 2015 public water systems and water treatment plant uh, data, the 2015 public water system annual report and the 2015 water treatment plant annual data report. <clears throat> uh, once again, our water plant is producing uh, high quality drinking water for about 60,000 people in Portage and region and uh, be happy to bring these ports, reports forward next week. Okay. Thank you, Councillor Wall. Uh, Transportation Committee, Councillor Draycott, please. Thank you, Your Worship. As alluded to this evening, we do have the CP Rail Crossing upgrades in committee. Uh, this will be coming to Council to make decisions on the next time we do meet. Uh, in the report, it just notes that we received email notice in January of 2016 that CP Rail had provided to us to propose some upgrades to 8th Street Northwest at the CP Rail Crossing. Uh, we do have a couple of uh, alternatives besides uh, proceeding with the proposed work at that crossing um, that administration has provided for us there. Um, the ins and outs of it are that they are looking to do some upgrades, the replacement of their control technology and uh, upgrade the controls for constant time warning systems <coughs> for warning signals. Um, they have sent all of that information over to Transport Canada and Transport Canada has approved the project and will provide funding of 50%. Uh, that does leave the city uh, to provide, I believe, 25% of the funding for that. Um, looking through the report, we had some uh, rail crossings that we were looking at upgrading that we do not have approval for this present year. Uh, and so I believe that was at 19th or at 18th Street, excuse me, the CP Rail Crossing upgrade there. Transport Canada has not, uh, has indicated they would not be funding us for upgrading the 18th Street Crossing that we have budgeted for. So it is an alternative that we can use our budgeted item to upgrade the 8th Street Crossing uh, as opposed to 18th as it was previously budgeted. Um, administration has set out here a recommendation for us to consider to for us to be going ahead with the upgrades to the 8th Street crossing to a maximum of $103,781.25. Uh, that were pre-approved for 18th Street. So we do have that ability um, or we do have the ability to not go ahead with the upgrades themselves. Uh, it was noted in uh, the report that we received that the actual, um, what it would do for us as a city was limited. And if I could, JM, just in Kelly not being here, is this similar to what we saw for CN Rail That's upgrades correct. last year? It's exactly the same system. So on that note, we did do this upgrade on 8th Street. Uh, we did budget for it and uh, approved it for the CN crossing this past year. And those upgrades have already been completed. That's correct. Okay, when I read the report, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, they were talking about a digital, the, the time would be displayed so people waiting would know how long before the train came? That is in the report that there would be a digital display. Um, that's not what we see at CN, but the theory behind this upgrade is to allow people to know how long before the train actually arrives so that they're not rushing from one set of tracks to the other set of tracks trying to beat the train. So in that sense, a little bit of a safety there. Um, it's just a constant time warning system to allow people to know exactly how long uh, until that train arrives. It is, uh, I think, important for everybody to know that as soon as the lights do go on at a railroad crossing that you are required to stop and only to proceed if it's safe to do so. That, so that would mean a stop train down the tracks, not a train barreling towards you. I do believe that that would be the definition of safe to cross. So. Okay. 
A um, couple of things trouble me about this. One is that I think Council's feelings and, and the administration of recommendation was that there was a lot more payback for Portage in upgrading the 18th Street. We've got a new road, a new um, uh, active transportation path there. Uh, it's being used more and more and, and that would give us bigger dividends. The other thing is that this 50% recovery, that's a significant decrease from a few years ago when Transport Canada used to fund this to um, I think 80%? Yes, that is correct. So a large change. And if I might ask again, um, our 18th Street proposition, was that taking into consideration Transport Canada giving back or paying towards that upgrade as well, or is that amount that we've allotted strictly to do 18th Street on our own? No, that was, a, a, <clears throat> excuse me, allotting for Transport Canada to pay back. And would that be cost. at the 50% or <clears throat> at the previous 80% we, that we had budgeted for? We budgeted 50% because we received the same amount of funding through uh, the CN project, so. Yeah. That was all the questions I had. Thank you. Any other questions for Councillor Draycott? Is, is it fair to assume that it's, <coughs> it's a scheduling issue and that 18th Street will come up in the we yeah, have to make we have to make the application. Sorry, Your Worship. We have to make the application in the, in the fall for uh, for Transport Canada's consideration. And if we use this money right now to upgrade Eighth <coughs> Street, then we would have to rebudget an amount of money for Eighteenth Street next year. Correct. So we would then use this money and have to allow for it in the next budget upon approval of Transport Canada. Yeah, but experience has shown that these crossings get upgraded on some sort of schedule and. 18th Street will be coming up for upgrading within the next several years <coughs> and all that. I think the thought process behind that was possibly because we put a new path at 18th Street and so we do see a lot more foot traffic there than we've <coughs> ever seen before because of the new path that goes out towards the new development in that area. So previous uh, pedestrian traffic wasn't as much of an issue but now uh, the safety of pedestrians crossing 18th at the tracks was why we had allotted that amount. Okay, any further questions? Okay, thank you, Councillor Draycott. Uh, Public Safety Committee, Councillor Espy. Just one item, Your Worship, it's the Operation Lifesaver has requested a resolution in support of National Public Rail Safety Week, April 25th to May the 1st. Well, it's good timing. Mm -hmm. And that will be coming forward with, of course, a, a, a positive recommendation. Okay. Any questions for Councillor Espy? Um, speaking of rail safety, I did notice something in the most recent federal budget. There is uh, an increase in funding for oversight of um, railways and particularly dangerous goods. And uh, I believe it's been about one, two years since we, our first responders started getting information on what's actually in those cars or what has been in those cars. And uh, that's, that's working okay? Yes. Getting that information? Okay. Okay, anything else, Councillor Espy? That concludes my report. And that concludes committee and we are adjourned at 6.46. PM.